Welcome back to Briggs on Books, our international talk show where we talk to authors all over the world. Are you looking for your next book to read? I've got the book for you. This is so exciting, kind of a dystopian science fiction, I guess we would call it. Our, our guest is Graham Pryor, all the way from Scotland. Welcome, Graham. Hi there, Frank. By the way, here's the cover of the book for our viewers, Cerberus. Cerberus. Uh, tell us a little bit about that book. Well, Cerberus came to mind when I was listening to some plans for colonizing other planets, and I thought, hell, that's not something we really want to do, is it? Because we'll go and ruin them. And that's where the idea blossomed. And I, the, the, the book is about a whole host of aliens who come to Earth to unmake humans, that is to get rid of them, because they think they can, they, if they get into space, they will destroy wherever they go. But having, getting rid of the humans, they realize there's a, a big void in the ecological structure, so they've got to have something to fill the, that space. And they hit on the canines, dogs, They're not just dogs, dogs, wolves, all, all the all the related species, and um, they give the dogs a higher consciousness and the ability to speak. And the book is really about the dogs having to come to terms with these new gifts because it's quite a shock to them, of course. And there's a lot of humour in it as they try out various ideas and philosophies. Uh, it, the other part of the story is that there's a, a large dog that they set free, a dog called Garth. He's in a laboratory and has been experimented on and they set him free and he's, he's got a, an ability to communicate with the aliens mm. and throughout the book he's struggling to find out whether he is actually gifted this new power to do things with or whether he's being used by the, the aliens to do their will and that all comes to a head at the very end. Wow, uh, it's dystopian, uh, science fiction, you've got uh, aliens and uh, dogs running the planet. Now, uh, by the way, and here's the cover again, Cerberus. What book, uh, this is your newest book. When did this come out? That was out in January. In January. And what was the this book? Year. You have a whole bunch of books out there, by the way. Which was the one right before this? That was Man with a Gun. Man with a Gun. And I just happened to have the cover right here. Um, mm -hmm. And what's this genre? Is it all similar genre? No, it's totally different. This is it's a bit of a crime book, really. It's set in a village, and it's obviously a copy of the village I live in. And it, it shows that you never know what's underneath the surface of, of what life in a village is like. I mean, it, it looks very cosy sometimes, but in this book, the, the main character discovers that his father was involved in something very shady. He discovers suitcases in the loft once his father has died, actually, actually stuffed with, with banknotes. And he's then has got to decide how to get rid of these banknotes and he also finds, in the sewing machine drawer, he finds there's a gun. And that's where the title comes from. He, he takes this gun with him wherever he goes because he's fearful of crime in the village. And uh, the book pursues this need to get rid of the money and he gets into a money laundering scheme with a friend of his mm -hmm. who is an accountant. And they, they run a, a burger bar and they have well, they also employ a whole bunch of prostitutes and they're trying to feed the money through this this illegal way of operating um, but they get mixed up with all sorts they get mixed up with a, a nationalist group who are trying to overthrow the government mm. and they get mixed up with gypsies who are trying to steal from the house and it's, it's a whole mess of stuff and it's it's billed as life in an ordinary village yeah that <laughs> That book would make me think of how would I get rid of money? How would I launder money? You know, it's amazing to think about that. It's hard to know, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we also have a book here. It looks like a dog. A pig? Pig. No, it's not a dog. It's a pig. It's a pig. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, that's, I keep thinking dogs because of the first book. Uh, that was, yeah, but it was based on a, an idea arising from a real issue. I mean, I, when I was a teenager, I knew a guy who was a, a real thug, and he, he was always up to crime. And then one day I was very surprised to see him walking up the street in a policeman's uniform. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's where the story starts. And the, the protagonist in this decides that he can join the police because, as he says, as a policeman, we can do whatever we like. We are the law. And he joins the police and he finds that actually he's 
not that sort of individual. He, he has to develop his ideas as a social crusader and he gets involved in what's happening in Britain at the moment is, is all these immigrants coming across the channel in rafts and he, he joins the border force. And the border force are really hard people who they, they just want to sink the boats, but he does his best to, to help the people arrive into the country. And he finds that behind it all is a big drugs gang mm. run by the local MP. And it, there's all sort of social comment throughout the book where they're uncovering how all the crime is done by the elite in the country. Mm -hmm. um, again, there's a lot of humour in it, a lot of social criticism, but it's all mixed up together to give it a little bit of excitement. And, You've got an amazing mind, uh, Graham, to come up with these ideas. Things that aren't even real, and you're able to get them to paper and make them into a story. Um, I, do, I don't want to go without uh, mentioning Alba Regained. Uh, tell us about that book. Alba Regained, well, that's all about Scottish nationalism. Um, you probably know that there's a large movement in Scotland for independence. Mm -hmm. um, and I was discussing this with some other like-minded people and it occurred to me that maybe they're wasting their time because by mid-century global warming will be really at its height and we could see that most of England's underwater so what's the point there's nothing there to be independent from I mean this is an extreme view of course so the book actually is about a group who are fighting for independence from the United Kingdom but it's also about climate change mm -hmm. and you get these situations where they're racing across the countryside in the middle of summer and there's suddenly a snowstorm and then there's hurricanes and the climax of the book uh, is not with a political victory but by a climatic one where wow. there's a massive hurricane and everything's ruined so it is to contrast the the way human beings strive for political ends which really are very insignificant in terms of the larger world of nature so that was quite fun to write as well. Pretty timely book too, I would say. Ah, uh, yes. That, well, both of those those issues are still very current. Yeah. By the way, all your books, are they for one audience, for different audiences? Well, I will see them for young adults upwards. and They sometimes need a bit of help. The Albert Regain book, I had to put in a glossary at the front of Scottish language so that people knew what the characters were saying. Yeah. Um, so they're fairly instructive, but yes, I, I think it's for all, all adults from teens upwards, really. They're, they're not too difficult. Yeah, no, they all sound amazing. Uh, yeah. By the way, I have your web address on the screen, grahampryor.ampbk.com. Mm -hmm. What would our viewers find if they went and looked at that website? Well, they would find news about the books that I've published with that. That's the publisher's website for me, McCauley. Um, they would find news about that each book as it's brought out and future books coming out. Yeah. And can they order the books on the, that website? Not from there, no. The, and probably the easiest way to order them is from Amazon. Go to Amazon, all, yeah. Yeah, all of my books are on Amazon, all 16 of them. So. Yeah, I was going to say, I, before every interview, I go to Amazon and see what's going on with the author, and I was going to say, Graham, it looks like there's a lot more than four books on there. How many books do you have? Um, I've now published seven, uh, 16, 16 fiction. Books, yeah. These are just the four that were done with Macaulay's, the publishers. The, the most recent four books, all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, there's been another one since then. Since then already, <laughs> okay. A self-published one, yeah. Oh, very good, very good. Um, these are fascinating, and uh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, uh, Serbius just sounds amazing how dogs are going to run the planet, aliens help them. You know, a lot of people think, well, maybe aliens helped humans uh, get their uh, consciousness, and uh, it's a great way to think it through, so I appreciate that. And then I want to read this book about the uh, Alba uh, Regained, about uh, Scotland and Scottish independence, and uh, as I'm currently coming to grips with my own Scottish ancestry. Um, uh -huh. We're really out of time, uh, Graham, but any last okay. thoughts you want to uh, share with our guests before we go? Well, I think what they'd like about my books is that they're very visual. I've been told they've been very visual. And I always see them in terms of a film. Yeah. And that, that makes it very easy to sit and read. You, you can just drift away into the book. Mm -hmm. any, so talks of, any talks of any of them turning into a, a film? 
I don't think so. No, I think you, you need to have some sort of public presence for that. Yeah, well, now that this interview's out there, maybe somebody will hear it and say, we've got to make that into a film. Uh, mm. Thank you, Graham. You're, you're a fascinating person, and I'm going to get back to you after I read a couple of your books, and hopefully you'll come back on the show again. Okay, thank you very much, Mike. And for our viewers, here's his latest book, but uh, go order it. But don't order one, by the way. When you're clicking order, order five of them. Give them out to your friends and get everybody reading the same book at the same time. Thank you so much, Graham, and we'll talk okay. to you again next time. Fine, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye now.